Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome, or perhaps welcome back, to my channel. It is that time of the month where I revisit a past sheetload of cards for the Sheetload Rewind series. Sometimes I go back and switch things up, sometimes I just make new sets. Now, if you enjoy this look back to the older editions, I do have the Rewind playlist down in the description box so you can check it out and watch more. Also down in the description box will be the link to the original debut and process video for the edition I'll be revisiting today. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you how you can download it for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. This month's Rewind is going to be going back to... July 2021. This was a special edition mini slimline and kind of a fun fold. The reason it's a fun fold or why I called it one is there is a backer panel and then the fun fold card is on the top and it's a book bind fold where you kind of adhere down the left section so only the right of the front comes up. Today I am going to switch it up just a little bit. Instead of having two different patterns here, I'm going to have the same pattern, but add a coordinating one in the background. Most of the time I will be using the single card dimension sizes here, instead of following page two for the cutting guides. As I get into the process, I will tell you about the products and tools that I'm using, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For my papers today, I chose an old pad from my stash called Fairy Tale Floral, and I pre-chose two pieces. The first one is this gorgeous floral here. I love the pink and yellow flowers, and to go with it, I chose this pink paper, and it has some uh, gold foil dots on it. I'm going to get started by cutting an extra piece for these cards and that's going to be on the backer panel out of this pink paper. Now because I won't know how many cards I can make until I cut this up, I did cut this first into pieces that were 6 inches wide by 3 inches tall and I ended up getting 8 of these. So that's how many cards I'll be making in today's session. Next, I'm going to be cutting the floral paper, and originally you cut piece A separate from piece B, but because I want these to spread across that card on the front, I'm going to cut it all together in one piece. So the height of this will be the same as on the printable, the two and two quarters, and I just cut four strips at that height. Then when I rotate it, instead of cutting it in a four inch section and I think a one inch section, I cut these at five inches. And right now I'm not gonna cut these down any further. We'll do that a little later on in the video. Next up, I cut my CS1 pieces, and these are the backer panel for the cards. I brought in two pieces of white cardstock and a pretty good size scrap. And I just cut until I got eight total pieces that were six and a quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. Now, don't forget, you don't need to be writing down or remembering any of these dimensions today. I'll tell you later on how you can download the printable for free. Next up is CS2, and these are the pieces that will be the book bind fold card on the front. And I just cut until I got eight pieces that were the same dimensions as on the printable. And later you'll see how we're going to do some scoring on these and some extra adhesion. And finally for the cutting is the imager sentiment piece, which is a half circle with the right side chopped off. Now if you're a channel member, make sure to check out the monthly blog and scroll down because I do have an SVG file that I gave out with the original version of this. Now don't worry if you're not a channel member or don't have some type of electronic cutter, I am going to show you how to create these. You'll start out with some circles that are approximately 3 inches, whatever will fit your sentiment and the dies you have on hand, and then you're going to cut these in half. For my circles today, I am using a lightweight 17 pound vellum because I like the way that you can see through it to the paper just like I showed you on screen. 
for my sentiment today, I'm going to be using this Hello die from my stash. And before I can figure out how much I want to chop off the edge, I did bring that in to give me a good idea. Once I figured that out, which for me ended up being about a half an inch off the right, I went through each of those halves I just cut and made a quick slice. Now I did flip mine over because I wanted to use the mark to the left of my cut line, but this will end up being on the right edge. Once those were done, I brought back in my floral piece and started cutting these so I have the one inch section on the left and then that larger section for the right. You'll see here that once I made the slice, I did make sure to offset those and keep them together so later it will flow across the finished card. Now I'm going to show you how to turn those white card bases into that book bind fold. It is sketched out and written out on the printable, but let me show you. First of all, I will be using my mini score buddy today, and I score at four and a quarter and five and a half. So that's right in the middle and then an inch and a quarter from that to the left. Then, like a normal card, it gets folded in half, and I do make sure it's folded nicely and then reinforce that. And then you fold back on that four and a quarter inch line. So you'll see there only part of the front opens up. Now before I add any more adhesive, I'm gonna go through and score and fold the remaining card bases. Now if you don't have a scoreboard, you could always just fold yours in half and what I would probably do if you don't have anything to mark it is go ahead and put that one inch strip on the left and then just fold back, try to get an even border to the right. Now to make these a book bind, we're gonna add some adhesive and it's gonna be right between those two score lines that we made. So I use my ATG, put a couple rows of adhesive and then pressed it together. And you'll see here what that looks like when it's all completed. I just finished adding adhesive to each piece until the eight cards were done. Then it was time to add the pattern paper to these. Once again, I made sure that I had the pattern flow from left to right, so I kept the two pieces together as I cut them. The littlest piece goes over on the left in the part that's closed, and then the larger one goes to the right. You want to try to get even borders on the outside edges, and that inner one will be a little larger. And that's because on the printable, I originally had you punching some holes there and maybe putting some string through it. But for me, which I should have probably already done this before I glued it down, I'm going to use some of these strips from Love from Lizzie. So I grabbed one, it's maybe the second from smallest size, and I put it right next to the fold and then when I cut off the ends I did leave a little bit extra so I could wrap these around to the back so they'd be nice and secure. I did go with the gold lines because I thought it would match nicely with that backer panel. A little shine on both pieces. At this point I decided to switch gears and go back to what I should have done first and I added the sticker strips to each of the card bases. Once all eight of those had been applied and wrapped around the back, I then continued with the pattern papers. Once again, making sure that the pieces I put on flowed together as they did previously to being cut. Once those were all adhered together, it was time to prepare the backer panels. So I brought back in my white cardstock and the metallic foiled pink piece. And I just added the pattern to the center of the white piece, just nice and flat for mailing. Once all of those were ready, I brought back in the book binding fold pieces and got these added to the fronts. I tried to get a nice even border all the way around. And then it was time to get the sentiments added. I decided to use some cilantro cardstock for the hello die because I thought this went nicely with the green in the pattern paper. So I took that off camera, cut myself eight hellos, and then got these added to the vellum. To do that, I used a pair of reverse tweezers to hold my die cut while I added the liquid glue to the back. And then I place this carefully onto my vellum piece, trying to get it centered left to right, and place each piece under a clear block to help it dry nicely. Once those had dried for a bit, I brought back in the liquid glue and the sentiments, and I added the glue. I tried to keep it right behind where the die cut was on the vellum, 
just again to keep the adhesive hidden from the front. I did decide, since these cards already had lots of sparkle, not to add any bling, and here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed this rewind to July 2021 and seeing how I switched it up just a bit. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. If you would like to make your own sheet load of fun fold mini slimline cards, as always, I do ask that you're subscribed to my channel before you click on the link to download the free PDF. We do just go on the honor system here. I don't make you send me any proof, but please make sure you've clicked on that subscribe button before you click on the link. You'll find today's link down in the description box right above my PO box address. Below it, it will say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is your password. Until my next video, I hope you all have a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.